So this afternoon, I am interviewing Mark Pugach, who is ITV's uh, chief sports presenter. Good afternoon, Mark. Um, Hello, Panda. Thank you How very you? much for talking to me today. How are you? I'm absolutely fine, thank you. I think uh, in these weird and mad days, I think the most important thing is to keep yourself healthy and your family healthy and uh, keep, keep yeah. the pressure off the NHS and do everything that we can just to, just to get through this. And just yeah. as importantly, keep everybody's mental health in a good state as well, particularly the kids who are, you know, minor university and leaving university age. Yeah. And that's, that's quite a, it's quite a demand on them. So I think that's the most important. No, thing. definitely. I think it is. It's, it's tough on the children. Mm. Definitely. Um, so Mark, um, how did you, how did your broadcasting career start and, and grow? Well, I'm probably about? like a lot of boys and girls over the years and probably still today obsessed by sport. And you probably think when you're about 10 or 11, well, I'm going to play for England. I'm going to open the batting for England or play up front for England. And then when you get to 12, you realise that's not going to happen because there's <laughs> a distinct lack of ability that go along with that. And then you think, well, if I'm not going to be able to play sport, the next best thing is to work in sports. If you can't, if you can't do it, you talk about it. So yeah. that's what I always, as a teenager, was, was intent on doing, I suppose. And then I got to, I went to university and then my last year at university, I had that conversation uh, with your parents that you do say, right, what are you going to do now? And I said to my dad, this is what I really want to do. My dad worked in the city and his dad worked in the city, although it wasn't quite as, uh, what's the word, as a sort of establishment as that, because his, yeah. my surname is Ukrainian. My grandfather was born in Ukraine, raised in Paris, came to London as a teenager. So it was slightly different. Mm. He wasn't sort of a traditional Englishman, far from no. it. I didn't know him, sadly. So, and my dad, so anyway, my dad said, no, if that's what you want to do, go for it. But you have to completely commit to this. Mm. Um, so after university, I went and did a radio degree a sort of postgraduate degree in London. There are lots of courses around the country that do that. And then I started at the bottom. I literally started at the bottom working in local radio in London, worked in local radio in, um, in Chelmsford. And I suppose the football analogy is that you're playing for Aldershot and you hope that Arsenal see you and that you get to the top at Aldershot and then Arsenal sign you and you go back into the reserves at Arsenal and then you make your way through the first team there. So I went, I went to, to Five Live, at BBC Radio Five Live, as it started, basically, yeah. in 1994, and joined the bottom, and then worked my way up from there. So it's quite a, it's a traditional route if you haven't, if you, I mean, obviously, if you're a sportsman or woman, there's a different route. You can sort of jump all that hurdle. But for yes. those of us who aren't going to play for England, that is the route. And it's still often, and it is the route. And it's the best route in many ways, because you route. learn so much. You learn Definitely. so much. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's definitely the right route. Um, and uh, Mark, who, who were your uh, sports presenter heroes? Do you have any that, you know? Yeah, you I mean, I, I grew up in the 70s and 80s. So people like Des Lynham, uh, whom I'm very lucky to have followed in, in two separate jobs now at, at uh, Radio 5 and uh, at ITV. People like that. Yes. Um, Richie Benno, because I'm a cricket nut. And Richie Benno on the television doing the cricket um barry davis who was a football commentator absolutely loved his rather acerbic take on things but yeah. i i would watch everybody and i still do i'd watch everybody and i would always make a mental note of what i liked and what i thought mm. worked and what i thought didn't and go i like that and i still do that today panda i'll watch television it doesn't matter that i'm in my 50s i'll watch somebody who's just mm. starting out and go i like the way they do that because you never stop learning and that's no, not just don't. a sort of cliche it's a truism and you're never too old to learn and you can always learn something from somebody else just as much as you can learn what you don't like as what you do like. Um, yes. And that's what I did. And I think that's really instructive. It also keeps me, that sort of attitude keeps me fresh. It keeps me young. I hope it keeps me relevant um, yeah. because, you know, we live in a, a world today, which is so changing so quickly. You do not want to be a relic or a dinosaur. People go, no. well, he's out of touch now, you know, he's, he's <laughs> run his race. So yeah, that, I find that approach. Them. Yeah, completely. It really helps. Yeah. Um, so, uh, my husband tells me you're pretty, you're pretty handy on the uh, football field, um, and you can. Your husband's a very kind man, Ollie. He's a very <laughs> kind man. He's a very good striker. Your husband. We played up front together a lot on the football pitch. Oh, really? Know? Yes, um, we did. Well, I will, in our twenties. I'll be very happy to hear that. Yes. <laughs> 
Um, and um, I know you, you, you captained your school cricket team and stuff. W would you, was it your dream, do you think, to play professionally? Well, or... it would have been my dream, but I knew it wasn't going to happen. And that's fine. I mean, that's, I, think, I think what would have been worse would it have been good enough so that you think you might make a professional yes. and then not. Much better to be in my category, which is, you know, a perfectly decent school and club player, always want to play football, always yeah. want to play cricket. But no, it's never going to go any further than that. But still play the game. And now I play golf and tennis and, you know, yeah. all that. Play the game for the love of the game. Although I've just got injured again playing football oh, no. last weekend. Pulled what my hamstring done? again. I pulled my hamstring oh. yet again. It may be time, the time has come to throw the boots away. No, it's going no, to be no. a hard. It's going to be a hard decision. But I think, you, you know, just to... I, I also think, I, have a, I also think, and no one will disabuse me of this, that if you play the game that you then talk about for a living, yeah. you, have a, you have an innate understanding of that game. And it's still the same game. Whether it's Arsenal v Man United or me playing mm -hmm. in the village, it's still the same game. Yes. Obviously, the skill level's far higher and yeah, the tactics but... are probably a bit more complex. Mm -hmm. But it's the same game, and instinctively you understand what's going on. And cricket's quite a complex game. I love cricket, so I understand instinctively what's going on. I, I, I really feel that Important. helps. So, yeah, That's and I always so I say to everybody, play the game as long as you can. I mean, I didn't play as much as I wanted to in my 20s and 30s football for the simple reason I was working every Saturday. Yeah, yeah. And then it was difficult and I had a young family then to go and play football on the Sunday. I felt that was yes. unfair on them. So, yeah. you know, listen, that's no, no big deal. But yeah. um, Ollie's very kind and we, we had a lot of fun. We used to play on Monday nights in London. Yes, Probably before I heard you had that. kids, but mine were little. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It's great, it's great. And now I see my son doing it. It's great for fitness, really good for mental health, which Definitely. is so important at the moment. So yeah. uh, I would, yeah, yeah. any book. Play. And I say to my son now, play as long as you can. Yeah, no, I think that's that's so right, definitely. Um, so Mark, you've been to some of the biggest games and events in the world, in the world of sport. Um, what uh, do you what would really stick in your mind? Are there any Standard. that stick in your well, mind? I mean, I could talk amazing. I could talk to you for an hour about all the ones I've been to. I mean, I've been to six Olympic Games, I've been to five World Cup footballs, yeah. I've been to three European football championships, I've been to, well, I've been to every World Cup, football, rugby, cricket, I've been to five Ryder Cups, I've been to Commonwealth Games in Australia wow. and India, I've been to World Boxing title, I mean, I'm, I'm incredibly lucky. Yes. I've done it, I've literally done it all, there's barely an event I haven't been to. I suppose what would stick out in my mind, if you ask me for four or five things and you know when i can't sleep at night you know I, mm -hmm. I sometimes think what are the what are the five or six best things i've been to you never forget your first my i, I love london 2012 olympics but you never get your first olympics sydney 2000 and i'd spent nine months in sydney as a 19 year old so i love the city that was mind-blowingly exciting to go to sydney yeah um i've been on three ashes tours down under in australia England yeah. one one in 2010 11 that was off the scale exciting mm -hmm. um to go to a football World Cup final, you know, if you're a football fan like I am, yeah. like your husband is, I've been to four of those, any World Cup final. I just, I even, I, and I always, and I always, and I still do, I still, and I hope uh, this never changes, have that uh, sort of childish excitement and privilege about going. I mean, I presented the, uh, the Rugby World Cup final from Tokyo live on ITV in November. I mean, goodness knows if I'd, I would have enjoyed it even more if I realised what was coming. And yeah. even, though England, even though England lost, it was a phenomenal occasion. And I was I walking along the touchline before the game thinking, this is why you do the job. So make yes. sure you still transmit that sense of excitement and privilege, but make yeah. sure that, you know, you're editorially and journalistically, uh, journalistically rig rigorous at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I could pick out any of those would be Grand National. I love the Grand I was oh, there when Tony McCoy, and I know Tony McCoy, and I know you've interviewed him. I know Tony yes. well. Yeah. When he won the Grand National in 2011, that was an incredible, yeah. very emotional afternoon. I was talking about it earlier today with somebody. One of the most emotional afternoons Amazing. of my working career, because yeah. I knew him well, I knew what it meant. So, mm -hmm. All those sorts of events are, yes. uh, you know, Six Nations, you know, Six Nations Rugby Championships, brilliant. Being in, being in Cardiff, when they shut the roof of the Principality Stadium is, there's nowhere like, I've actually there's nowhere like it in rugby or football in the world than Cardiff when they get going. Yeah. And I was there the day they, they didn't beat England, they destroyed England. It was a, 
Uh, you know, it was, yeah. I'm English, fun enough, but I almost <laughs> wished I was Welsh that day. Yes, so now I bet. Atmosphere. Yeah, it was great. So I would always say keep, you've keep that. witnessed level. some amazing stuff. Yeah. Amazing. I really have. Oh, Super Saturday. I was, I was in the stadium at Super Saturday in 2012. So you had Jess Ennis winning and Greg Rutherford winning and Mo Farah winning. I mean, wow. Mo Farah, it, the only way to describe it is, you know, uh, when you see in, in, um, fair, in circuses sometimes, somebody riding around the wall on a, on a bicycle. Yes, yeah. It went, as he went round, it was just like a sort of uh, a domino effect of noise. So every time he ran past that section, they would roar. Then he'd go to the next section and they would roar. Amazing. And it got louder and louder and louder as the laps, you know, came down and it looked like he was going to win. We are... Yeah. I, oh. I've done this job 30 years. We, the British, I'm talking about the English, the British are the best sporting fans in the world, bar none. No one comes close to us. No. And people say, well, how can you say that? I say, I can say that because I walked into the stadium in... Uh, in the nor in Hokkaido, which is the northern island of Japan, when England played yeah. Argentina in the 2002 World Cup, it was the game where David Beckham scored. So it was a bit of a redemptive yes. game for Beckham. And I, I just walked into the stadium and I looked around, and there were like 25,000 England fans. And I'm thinking, where have they come from? Yes. And you go to you went to an event in Beijing and the Beijing Olympics, and all these UK these British fans. That's why I say it's a British thing everywhere. You look at the Rugby World Cup in Japan last year, British fans from all four corners of the island extraordinary level of support and knowledge yeah. and sportsmanship and understanding and you only have to look at the british and irish alliance tours and the yeah. rugby to see what that's like so it's a it's a great privilege and mm. it's you know that it's enjoyed here and it's reflected here as much as it is on the field that you're watching at the time yes. yeah good on the british brilliant i mean brilliant <laughs> it is brilliant so um Presenting live sport must be sort of fairly fraught with last minute issues, technical challenges. Um, have you had, have you got any funny stories to tell about things, you know, viewers and or listeners didn't, didn't see or hear? Well, well, I mean, obviously part of the job is to make sure that you don't see it and that yeah. you don't hear it, whether yeah. radio or TV, or there are plenty of times where there are lots of joins but it's my job to make sure that you can't see the joins um, and that, you know, it all seems serene on top, but like the duck, it's all paddling fast yes. underneath. I mean, the most recent was at the Rugby World Cup when England beat New Zealand in the semi-final, which was a massive event. And after the match, so hopefully from our point of view, we've got a great audience and people, because it was Saturday morning, people have gone off to mm -hmm. do their Saturday morning things. But it was one of those where obviously all the technical, all the lines, literally the phone lines are going back to London. And we were in the studio in an advert break and it suddenly went silent in my ear because you have an earpiece, obviously, which yeah, connects yeah. you to the gallery, as they call it. And it went silent in there. And I'm sort of looking around like this. And I'm looking, so I've got Johnny Wilkinson with me and I've got Supply Woodward with me. Yeah. And, and a TV studio obviously has three or four cameramen yeah. and it has somebody called a floor manager who's in charge of you, a lady called Karen, who's brilliant and put people mm -hmm. there. And I'm looking at Karen and I'm thinking, have we fallen off air because this happens? Oh it's absolute silence in my ear. So if we have fallen off air, we have no idea whether we're still in the advert break. We might still be selling Weetabix, which is fine. But if we've come back in vision, then, you know, I'm sitting there looking like a, <laughs> you know, looking like a startled ghost um and there was the ca in 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 the in the corner was the camera and there's somebody called an auto cue person it's a man or a woman in this case it's a lady called Sophia, who's the best in the business by miles and i just looked up there and she started so she types the word so beforehand a script i i agree on the script i do the script yeah. i give her the script she types it up so you know i know what i'm doing you don't yeah. need it that much but you need a bit anyway she started typing keep talking we've lost the la you know we've lost the link to london so oh. we probably if you'd been watching you would have probably seen me for five or ten seconds be silent and you would have been home going what's going on what's going on with these yes. fellas why are they not talking and that's where you just have to understand it's only television nobody died it's not no. a big deal everyone understands happens so i just i remember just saying Sorry about that. Uh, we, I think we lost contact with planet Earth there for a moment. But we're all back here. Yeah. And it, 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 the only way of communication I had was through the camera with Sophia, who was in a truck, which was only on, you know, outside of the ground in Tokyo. Yeah. Yeah. And her typing, keep talking. Mm. But you, know, it, it, you, know, you have lots of little mishaps or whatever. But as I say, 
My attitude's uh, always been, you just say sorry. Everyone knows how TV's made. Things yeah. happen sometimes. It's not a, it's not a big deal. Not I mean, it's a big deal. Happy. Big deal is if you libel somebody or if, you know, you swear oh. or whatever. Yeah. You just try not to do I haven't yet. Try not to do either of those. Uh, but, you know, in terms of that, that's, that's, that's the most recent one that's yes. comes to mind. Yeah. Oh, very good. Okay. Um, so apart from big venues like Wembley, um, what are the minor sports events you've been to that people should try and get to, do you think? What are those? Oh, uh, well, well, you should get to one which I haven't been to, which my son has, I'm really jealous, which is not going to happen this Christmas, which I'm gutted about, is the darts at Ali Pali, Alexandra Palace. I mean, that is one of the... I, I, I've been to the darts, the one that's in Frimley Green, which is on the BBC, which used to be a big deal, sadly, not as big now, but Ali Pali is the one. That is a massive deal. That is unbelievably good fun mm -hmm. my friend my son went with his friends about four years ago and um uh, a friend of mine who's a director at sky tv got him some tickets and i texted him that morning and i said my son wants to know can he he's not sure can he go in fancy dress and the text came back he has to go <laughs> in fancy dress it's compulsory <laughs> and they said they had the most brilliant good fun yeah you know you can have a beer obviously more than one if you want you don't have to just to, just just fun and yeah. you know so I would love to, uh, that is brilliant. But all those, all those little events, um, which you tend to see at the Olympics, to be fair, yes. you know, yes. uh, volleyball at the Olympics, you know, yeah. modern pentathlon at the Olympics, all these sorts of events. And gymnastics, go and watch gymnastics if you yeah. get a chance. That is spellbinding. I mean, these people are bendy. I mean, it is ridiculous what they, what they do all these events and it's funny as brits again every four years we all not just us in the media become complete experts on this at the summer olympics and i've been to a winter olympics as well panda that's yeah. amazing speed skating to you know luge tobogganing and, and since i i did one 20 years ago since then now they've got obviously all the um ski racing which they didn't have when i went so yeah. they're actually you know racing each other across the moguls and the slopes i bet that these things fun. are brilliant I, I think if you and curling if you learn if you learn about a sport then you have every chance of enjoying it yes people, it's when people say to me i don't like cricket it's really boring and they mean, probably don't do you, know anything I about said, do you understand the laws of cricket and what they're trying to do mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. two categories one no i don't it's boring well you can't tell me it's boring if you don't know so try those who say yes i understand it it's still boring fine i you know i, yeah. don't, I don't terribly like spinach i've tried it i don't really like spinach i understand i don't like spinach but don't tell me something's boring if you don't know what it entails so i would any of those olympic sports um darts i mean darts is just it's i mean i, I covered it once as a as i say working 15 years ago it was brilliant absolutely brilliant fun and it's properly skillful don't pretend yeah. it's not no. and, and a lot of stamina needed Yes. A long old match, a long old championship. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and are there any sort of sports events um, that, that you've sort of got left in your sort of sporting bucket list? That you yes, yes, do? yes, there are. Well, I'd like to go to the darts, but I want to go as a punter and drink beer, to be honest. Yes, quite right. I would, I would, I actually would like to go to the Super Bowl. I'm not nuts about American football, but I like it and I like the razzmatazz and I would like to go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, uh, because I like the way they do it. I like the way the media is set up. So I've had lots of friends who've been for work. And in the week before, literally the players are sort of in little hutches at the media day and anybody can go and interview them, you know, British media as well. I'd yeah. love to do that. And I would love to because I'm in terms of rugby union, I've done, you know, I've done 20 years of the Six Nations on radio and TV. And I've done, you know, I've done the last two World Cups, one in Japan and, and the one in England, but I've never done the British and Irish Lions. I'd love to go on a Lions tour. Yeah. Pre I mean, I don't mind where I go. New Zealand would be amazing because it's the, the hope, you know, they are yeah. so obsessed with rugby union. But I would love to go on that. So so really the Super Bowl and particularly the British and Irish Lions. Yeah. Even, I'd like to, I would like to work on all of them because my instinct is always to work. But if I can't work, I would want to go as a punter. Yes. Yeah. Um, brilliant. Okay. So... Um, they say don't meet your heroes. Um, which sports stars have you met that, that sort of live up to your hopes? I'm sure there are probably lots, aren't there? Yeah, but I, funny enough, it was funny enough, those who were heroes when I was a kid aren't really in 
aren't really in the round now. What I mean by that is, you know, they're not really people I would meet now because, you know, obviously no. I'm 52, they're in their 70s and 80s. Those I meet now probably were playing, you know, when I was in my late teens. So they're probably less hero, hero in that sense. But I have to say those that I uh, work with and have come across regularly, pretty much a man and woman have been, have been fantastic people. Mm. I mean, um, so for my generation, these names will mean a lot of people of my generation, 50s in football, people like Terry Butcher and Chris Waddle, who were in the England team who reached the semi-finals in 1990. Fabulous human beings, mm. tremendous fun. You need stamina when you go out for a night with them, put it that way, <laughs> tremendous fun. Brilliant stories, but not, none of them are actually, not sort of, I was an England player, who are you? Not at all, mano a mano, one on one. Uh, people like that, A.P. McCoy, I know well, I mean, yes. uh, who you've interviewed. I mean, just, uh, I did a docu I did a, yeah, I did a documentary with him on five, Radio 5 Live, A Day in the Life of a Jockey. That was extraordinary yeah. to hear. Yeah. And I got in the car with it. I said, I want to spend the whole day with you, A.P. So uh, I went out on the gallops with him at seven in the morning yeah. and then sat in his car when he looked through the car and who he was, who he was riding with. And I deliberately chose an unglamorous day. We then got in the car, you had a driver, and we drove to Lost Fass Los um, Fa in Wales. Yes. So we went four hours away. Um, and he had four runners, and the first three didn't win, and he was getting increasingly irritated, which was yeah. great for the documentary, because it yes. was real. <laughs> and he won the fourth, it was relaxed. And things like, you know, that was amazing. I mean, in rugby, I worked with Rob Andrew in the early days, Matt Dawson, now Johnny Wilkinson, Clive Woodward, who've done it all, won the ultimate. I have to say... I suppose less hero, uh, heroes in a way, but I was more in my late teens, early 20s. Just people with a lot to say and a lot to offer, but always on a, but none of them are a, uh, in a condescending or patronising no. manner of who, or who are you. And then people like Ian Wright and Lee Dixon, I work with now on ITV and Roy Keane. I've got to tell you something, Panda, about Roy Keane. Mm. And people want to, if they're watching this on video, will want, or, will want to wind this bit back or, um, yeah. or reread it. He is one of the funniest people I've ever met. He has got the driest, funniest wit I've ever met, or well, what people I've ever met. He genuinely has. He, I mean, he's a, he's a fantastic individual. He really is. I mean, don't ask him a stupid question, but I know a no. lot of people I don't want to ask a stupid question to. No. People like that, it's great. And when you work with these people, because they're all slightly different, they all demand a different skill from me as a presenter. So if I'm yeah. sitting in a room with, if I'm sitting in a studio with Ian Wright and Roy Keane, I have to ask a different question to them and approach them differently to elicit from them the best answer yes. for you, the viewer. Same with yeah. Johnny Wilkinson and Clive Woodward. That's yeah. what I have to do. In cricket, I've worked a lot with Michael Vaughan, Alex Stewart, Jeffrey Boycott as well. You have to, it's part of the skill and the training and the yeah. knowledge that I have of these people and these uh, sports, I have to know how to approach them all differently. Yeah. Yeah. You, can't, you can't have a one size fits all with all of them. them. To get the best. My job, Graham Norton said, if it's good enough for Graham Norton, it's good enough for me. Mm. Graham Norton said, I am the waiter and it is my job to, to bring these people to you, the public, yes. in the best possible light and the best possible way. And that demands of me a different approach to each of them. Maybe yeah. three people in the studio, a slightly different approach to all three. That's part of my job. My job's not just to ask the questions and listen to the count. No. It's, to, it's to elicit the best conversation from them. And that's what yeah. the skill involves by, 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 ref, by understanding their different characteristics. Yeah, yeah. what makes them tick. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah it does. Totally, totally. Um, so, Mark, you were controversially let go, as it were, <laughs> by um, BBC uh, Five Live last year. Was it last year? Uh, oh. Yes, yes, it was the end of last year, yes. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yes. Wait, where you had... Oh, my goodness, I'm so sorry. That's all right. <laughs> Is that a child? No. Yeah. Sorry, I thought it was on right. silent. Right, it's on silent. Right. Anyway. You wouldn't get away I, with that in a TV studio, Pam. No, you'd be in terrible trouble. I need a lot more practice. Aaron, the floor manager, will be looking at you now. <laughs> Not good. Sorry about that. It's all right, um, don't worry. Okay, so sorry. Um... You were let go by a BBC Five Live last year, where you presented since uh, 1994. Yeah. Uh, what What do you think? How was it? How was it handled? Do you think, looking back? That's a very, <laughs> very good question. I, my, my experience, not just of me, but of of, of working in in the media, is that big corporations, by and large, are pathologically incapable of handling 
exits which can be completely justified yeah. in a sort of respectful, dignified way. They always make a hash of it. And, and they made a hash of it. But none of that will detract from uh, the experience I had there, the affection I had there, and certainly doesn't alter at all the friendships I made. The friendships there are rock solid. Nothing's going to ever detract from that because I work with the best people, both yeah. sides of the microphone, and uh, the, you know, I'd go over the top for them. Uh, they could have handled it better. What what the what they did was complete. I mean, I'm self-employed. I'm a freelancer. I have a contract. It runs out. You completely. They were completely. Anybody's completely justified to say, "You've run your race. We want to go in a different direction." That's absolutely fine. Mm. It just wouldn't have taken very much to have done it in a in a in a more in a, in an ease. In a, yeah, the word is dignified. A more dignified yes. way. But yeah. I, I don't. I I hold no grudge. How could I hold a grudge? They all those events that I let I named to you that I've been to was 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 under their banner and I absolutely loved it and I was incredibly proud to to work for them for as long as I did and to present I presented the Saturday afternoon program for 16 years I mean long time. that's the longest in that's the longest in radio history that's longer than Eamon Holmes that's longer than yes. Des Lynham that's longer than Jim Rosenthal 16 years yes. I did that and that's yeah. something I'm astonishingly proud of so yeah, they made a mess of the end it doesn't uh, genuinely I'm not just saying it doesn't matter it doesn't matter row of beans now I mean if, if you know uh, management yeah. could learn a different way of dealing with these things but the point is the people i work with were and are phenomenal and we're all still mates we have a whatsapp group and and all that and well that's good and uh, that's photograph good. yeah that's all and that's honestly that's all that matters yeah. that's all that matters i had a brilliant time there and it came to a, a natural end because mm -hmm. i was doing more and more television and in the end i couldn't ride two horses and no. i knew that i couldn't no. i couldn't carry on being five lives main man and be itv's main man that wasn't yeah. That wasn't really no. that wasn't really going to be fair on either or really sustainable um, mm. in the end. So yeah, as I say, n'importe quoi. It really doesn't matter now. No, we are very. It really doesn't. Very good philosophical about it. Yeah, I think it's really important. I'm not. I, you know, I couldn't possibly be, be bitter, but I'm not a bitter person. Bitterness doesn't get anybody. I've got no reason to be bitter. And you, I was hacked off about their way they. They announced it because they put out a completely erroneous statement. But honestly, it, does, it genuinely doesn't matter. Because if that sort of thing winds you up for too long, it's oh, corrosive. It's, you you it's, only harms yourself. It only harms yourself. It you, doesn't it? It's, it's not, yeah, it does. Yeah, it got us. You know, we all, we, 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 we're living in an era, particularly with COVID now, where mental health is so important. Yeah. Particularly, if, and obviously with having kids that we all do, that's really mm. important. They know this. So Very. in a way, you need to show that leader, go, it's fine. It's no, yeah. you know, it's. I've seen them. I've seen them since. In fact, I, I went up about a month later. And we had a big night out together. Oh, so good. you know, that that just shows absolutely no yes. no harm done long term. Right. Good, good. That's really good to hear. Yeah. Um. And uh, Mark, what advice would you give? You know, a young person looking to become a sports presenter, get into presenting. Got any uh, sort of Yes, absolutely. I have. Um, what I would say is a bit like my dad said to me 30 years ago, you've got to be completely committed. You yeah. cannot do this half heartedly. Mm -hmm. It's extremely antisocial. If you really want, if you want to do sport, you'll work every single weekend. Johnny will ask you to go to the Lake District. I can't, I'm working. You know, your girlfriend will say, I want to go to Ibiza tomorrow with the, with the team. You can't, you're working. So-and-so says, oh, you know, uh, Jill's getting married. We're going to this. You, you may not be able to, or you have to go in the evening. Mm. Um, you're going to work every weekend. You're not going to make it. You're not, you're not in it for the money. Get that absolutely right. You're not in it for the, you're not in it for the money. You're going to work weird hours, probably weird places. You might have to start working somewhere around the country where you don't want to. But as long as you are completely committed, it is an incredibly rewarding and fun job. It yeah. really is. I mean, all the places I've been, I must've been to over 50 countries, 60 mm. countries probably doing this. And standing on the touchline in Tokyo, sure, oh, there was some pressure. It's the Rugby World Cup final. But it was, you know, for me, I'm like, this is why I do it. And, yeah. and, and I will do it to the best of my ability. The other thing I would say, which is really important is, and as I still do now, watch lots of people, listen to lots of people, read lots of people, decide what you like and what you don't like. That was really good. Why did they do it that way? Oh, I like that little verbal trick or that little trick of photography. That's, that's, really, that's really clever as well. And, and be knowledgeable. You cannot have experience and gravitas when you're 23. Of course you can't for obvious reasons, but you can have knowledge when you're 23. And don't say... I don't know that I wasn't born 
Panda, neither yeah. of us were alive with Henry VIII, but we both know how many wives okay. he had. Yeah. I'm not interested. I'm, I'm not interested in. Oh, I wasn't. Born, I don't know Don Brab, and I wasn't born. I don't know Lester Piggott. You know, you know it. If you want to be a sports you journal, know. you need to know. I don't know very much about Formula One, but I make sure I know enough. Yes. So read the paper. Get your not. The one thing you there is no excuse for is not to have enough knowledge. And I don't just mean today's knowledge no. or yesterday's knowledge. I need knowledge. History. Because if you have knowledge of 15, 20 years ago, you can put into context what happens today in relation to what happened 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. So be dedicated, be curious, be nosy, read up, learn your stuff, yes. be, be, hum be humble. Mm -hmm. And two, uh, two more things, so I'll give you a lot there. No, you good. need uh, two. You need a very, very thick skin. Not everything goes your way. I promise you. Not even at my stage now. I, I took a bash the other day. A job I really enjoyed got taken away from me. That was really hard. I found that really difficult. It happens. It's yeah. not a personal thing, because what happens is Panda's your boss. She likes you, Mark. Will you do this job for three years? Oh, blub it, Panda. Then Panda goes and gets another job, and Ollie comes in and goes, Mark, I don't want you. I want this person. What do you mean? I'm really good. Great. No matter. Ollie's in charge now. Panda's gone. That's yeah. the way it goes. So have a very thick skin. And most of all, you need a lot of stamina. Yeah. You need a lot of stamina oh, because you need longevity in this job. And you're going to have to be able to, you know, you've got to perform. Every, it's like being an actor. You've got to perform every single day. And you might have had a row with your girlfriend. You might be hung over. Mm. The cat might have been sick in your shoe. Your baby might have <laughs> kept you up all night. No one cares. No. No one cares. The microphone's on. You're performing. No yeah. one cares. There's mm -hmm. no excuse to go, I'm really sorry I didn't do very well today. You know? yeah. Had a bit of a row with my girlfriend. Yes. I don't didn't care. Do very well People at home are watching the football. People at home are listening to the rugby. I don't yeah. care. I don't care. So, you know, you've got to compartmentalise. Red light yeah. goes on, you're acting. Curtain goes up. Hello, here we are. Hello. Turn on at home, so what? Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, that's very interesting. Um, so, Mark, you've you've launched a pr uh, company a media training company um yeah i just i just thought that uh yeah well i just covid's been obviously has uh, asked all of us so many questions and i'm going to carry on doing my broadcasting and i hope until i'm 75 80 i mean as long as people want me to talk about sport or, or news for that matter i will do it but yes. it it was a good time to open my eyes to other things as well so i'm getting involved in a production company which uh, I, I will tell you about when that's launched and i'm really excited about that and then a neighbor of mine who i've known for 15 years runs a very successful pr company and he said to me I'd like to start an offshoot with you where we provide uh, media consultancy, media training, uh, brand management and, and PR advice to, uh, to people. So we've got one client already. We're talking to three others. And it's just a way, if you like, of running a couple of things in parallel. I mean, my broadcasting is still obviously the main plank of what I do. Yes. But with his experience of, of, of training and running very, a very successful PR company and obviously my experience of the media and what it takes to come across well on the media and the media skills necessary to get your message across no. and particularly your brand. That's the thing, Panda. I mean, you've got a brand in Grapevine. Brands are really, people are used to a brand uh, with an entity, but if you're a sports person, there's a brand in you as a sports person and that brand is gonna sustain you far beyond your sports career. So we want to work with people to help them get their brand, as it were, established while they're a sports person so that when they retire, people will go, well, I know so-and-so. This is what they stand for. This is how they come across. Yeah. This is how they are. Yeah. So that's the sort of thing we're doing. And we've been, well, we launched just before COVID. But as yeah. I said, we've got one cloud already. We've got three others we're talking to. We talked to a, a current a Great Britain athlete this morning as well. Yeah. So I'm really excited to see where that goes and to, and to help people. I mean, we don't want to just help people in sport. Let me emphasize that if anybody... Mm -hmm you know, is thinking that, um, you know, yeah. we're very, you know, very keen in that media consultancy brand PR world. There's a, there's a lot that, that, that we can do to get people's message across and to yeah. make sure that their brand is, is well established for the long term. Yeah. Very good. Very mm -hmm. good. That's very, exciting. it's really interesting to do something else. Take me out of my comfort zone because well, the yeah. other thing is, I remember somebody saying to me what, when I was, I've been in radio for a long time. Someone said, do you want to go into TV? And I went, yeah, because I want to challenge myself. Mm. I think it's very, it, somebody once said to me, the easiest thing in the world is to say no. In other words, yeah. I'm good at this. I'm yeah. staying here. Chris Evans, DJ Chris Evans said it very well when he left Radio 2 and went to Virgin. He said, I climbed the mountain. Yeah. The view up here is great. 
but there's another mountain over there. And I wonder what well, it's like to climb that, that, that mountain. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I climbed the radio mountain. That was brilliant. Now I'm up climbing a TV mountain. That's yeah. great. But I look at this PR media training mountain and go, I want to have a go at that. Uh, that I'm was... having a look at the uh, production mountain. I go, I want to have a go at that. And it's just, it's really good. It keeps me, keeps me fresh, keeps me relevant, keeps me yeah. driven. I mean, I get it from my mother, to be honest, Panda. You know, my wife calls it Protestant work ethic. I just, you know, I've been given an opportunity here. Yes. And uh, I, I owe it to, I probably owe it to my parents, to my upbringing, to the chances I had not to leave anything out there. In yeah. football terms, you know when there's the FA Cup final, you hear the manager go, don't leave anything out there, give it everything. Yeah. That's how I feel about it. Yeah. I owe it to them to, to give it everything, now in more than one discipline. Yeah. Good on you. Brilliant. Really good. And God, it must have been pretty tough. So you launched just before lockdown, did you? Yeah, we did. Yeah. But it meant we could get everything together. We could get our plan together. Yes. And, and, and because obviously it's not our primary business for either of us, we could just, you know, we could just feel our way into it yeah. and basically see where it takes us. So that's good because it took the pressure off. You know, he's got his PR companies. I got my broadcasting. Yeah. You know, yeah. we, we, we've got this on the side for both of us. It's on the side. So it took, it took the pressure off yeah. uh, when it, when it comes to, uh, you know, rather than going, Oh my God, we need to get X class by so-and-so. Yeah. Otherwise we you know the children aren't going to eat, you know, it's a, yeah. just a good way of, it's a good way of feeling our way into the, into the market. Yeah. And, you know, we have a natural synergy because we come from two different parts of the same media landscape. I think we've got quite a unique offering to the people there. Mm -hmm. Very good. So, um, uh, you're you're doing you see this desert island discs type of thing oh yeah yeah um, tell me about that well what what we're doing is something uh with my wife which we're calling well we're calling ordinary people extraordinary lives and the truth is everybody's life is extraordinary and what what we're doing and we're just start we're just starting with a with um, some with a couple in the village to be honest who are in their mm. 90s what oh, we want wow. to do is to offer people, my father, well, I, here's the easiest way to explain it. My dad died 30 years ago. He died before, basically the year after I started. Um, and the, I've got pictures of him all around here. My mum died three years ago. The thing oh, is wow. that after a while, you for, literally forget what their voice sounds like. Mm. And I was thinking to myself one day, if, if I had, even though he died in his 50, if I had a record of my dad talking about, I don't know, his dad or growing up in the war or yeah. his love of cricket, it would be a very nice permanent reminder of his of what he liked in life, but also of his voice. And I could play, play it to my kids and my nieces and nephews. They never knew this is what your grandfather sounded like. So mm. we were just talking about it, and a friend of mine has done it with, with his dad, is we thought, why don't we approach people and say, people, Panda, of your or my generation, really, and say, would you like a, an interview, a record of your parents or your yeah. aunt, your uncle, or maybe your grandparents are still alive, yeah. talking about what was most fascinating in their life? It could be anything. It could be the war. It could be some work. It could be something they invented. It could be something they did. It doesn't matter what it is. That basically you have a 45 to one hour physical recording of your yes. grandfather, for argument's sake, or your father for argument's sake mm -hmm. to, to pass down to the generations to give to your children so that when they're our age they can say to their children this is what your grandfather did this is what it's like yeah. so it's a very like all the best all the best things it's very simple it's very straightforward you can do it two ways and we as i say we're just launching with a with a couple in the village it can be a straight interview with one person or two people yeah or you could say to me my mum had the most amazing life. I'd actually like her, I'd like you to speak to her three or four different people from different, maybe somebody she was at school with, maybe somebody yeah. she worked with, do you know what I mean? Could do it either way. And this, of course, with Zoom, it's very straightforward to do That's it now brilliant. as well. So and when we so what we what my wife and I felt was that um I think we're all a bit sick of celebrities telling us all the time about X, Y, yeah. and Z and how tough their life is in lockdown, not really made. And so Tom Moore showed us just how amazing oh, the ordinary human being is. And yeah. everybody, as I say, if, my gra if I'd known my grandfather, I'd have sat her down and I'd have gone, he, he was born in Ukraine, he's Jewish, he, I, but he did, wouldn't remember that. He grew up in Paris. I said, tell me about growing up in Paris. Tell me about your parents. Tell yeah. me what your parents told you about leaving Ukraine, this, this village. No, it's a town. I've been in a town three hours west of Kiev, yeah. which, which I've been to. Tell me about living there. I don't know anything about the Jewish faith because I'm, my, mm. I'm Protestant. Tell mm. me about the Jewish traditions growing up. Tell me about why you came to London. 
You lived on the old Kent Road. You were a Jewish family. How was that? Tell me about going to oh, living yeah. in Golders. Just that would have been every because the point is ordinary people extraordinary lives because everybody's life is extraordinary. It's extraordinary. Everybody's life touches mm. somebody in a completely unique and special yeah. way. And I think there are so many stories out there. I don't think you have to go very far to find them. So we're saying to people, if you'd like this, get in touch. We'd love to do it. And because one of the reasons I do what I do, Panda, is I'm really nosy. I'm really nosy. And, and uh, before we started this interview, the second thing I said to you is, where do you live? I'm absolutely fascinated yeah. where people live. I want to yeah. know where they live. <laughs> I want to know how, how many children they've got, where they live, what yeah. makes them tick. I love all that sort of stuff. Everybody's got something to say. Well, of course and of course, by the time they're that age, a lot of people have got grandchildren with a mate. And they go, oh, so the couple here, they went, oh, our granddaughter. She's mm. an amazing poet. And she does this. I think, oh, really? Yeah. That's great. What's, what a, what's her interest? What drives her? Yeah. So, again, it goes back to those saying COVID, the diversification with the PR firm, the production company, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. ordinary people, extraordinary lives. I'm really, I'm really excited to see what's out there, what stories are out there. Yeah. There are 60 million of us in this country. There are plenty of stories out there. Loads of stories. Yeah. Out. yeah. I'm sure there'll be a lot more stories to tell after this year as well. Oh, won't they oh. just, won't they just. Um, but so time. lovely to be able to hear, you know, hear the voices, the recording the voices. Oh. You know? my, my, my father died in 1991. He was only 57, which is a huge, he missed everything, which is a great personal shame. Mm -hmm. that, nothing I can do about that. His aunt was was so my grandfather's sister so his aunt they, they were the ukrainian family who went to paris yeah. after after my father died so we were the only relatives left i went to see her she lived in north london i went to see her in a flat um and i wrote i said tell me everything you know about the family in ukraine and how they got here and everything and she told me and i wrote it all down but of course i look back at it now and i should have recorded it all yeah i should have fizzed i mean today it's easier yeah. because you can do broadcast quality on these yeah. I could have just, I could have told her, I could have recorded it all. <clears throat> and that would have been, that would have been great. But, um, you know, she told me all the stories. I mean, I still, one of my ambitions in life still is to, is to, is to retrace my, it would have been my great grandfather's journey from, he, he came from a town called Zhitomir in, uh, in Western Ukraine to Paris. Yeah. And I looked at lots of maps already. And I've spoke to a couple of, spoke to, 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 to a man who called Peter Frankopan, who people know is a brilliant professor of history at Oxford. And I went, I just, we had a, a mutual contact. I said, do you have any idea which route he would have taken? And he went, not sure, but try this. So yeah. I'm still trying to plot that. I'd love to. Oh, the well, whole concept, the whole concept of going, of coming home one day and saying, right, we're going. Yeah. We're going. We're I mean, off. that's a story that's been told a million times around the world in every culture, yeah. in every diaspora. But that fascinates me. So. Yeah. There's still lots I want to do. Lots and mm. lots. Um, and so, I mean, what do you, what are your thoughts on how the world of sport is surviving or is going to survive during this nightmare? Yeah. Pandemic, that's what, you know, that's because of my, uh, my big sigh. That really worries me. Mm. That really worries me. I mean, cause Premier League football will be okay. Yeah. As, the, as, the, as you know, you live near Cheltenham and Cheltenham Town. I mean, how the heck are they going to survive? Mm. Gloucester Rugby Club, how's it going to yeah. survive without, <clears throat> without crowds? How does Cheltenham Racecourse survive without crowds? I mean, it's incredibly worrying. Before you even get to non-league football, how's Forest Green Rovers survive? I mean, it's, it's, it's incredibly worrying, which is why... Uh, so the answer is very, in a very difficult manner, which is why I think it's absolutely critical the, 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 we keep pushing the government to say, are you sure we can't have yeah. a thousand people at Forest Green or at Cheltenham standing yeah. outside, which is accepted is better, standing two metres away from each yeah. other and who will walk in and walk out. I mean, I know they, tr they tried a test about it at Harlequins Rugby. A friend of mine went there. Obviously, they've scrapped them now. Yeah. He said it was fine. He had, neither, he had nobody two seats either side there and no one in rows there. He said it was fine. Yeah. We, I mean, we are not going to have... And the, po the point is... It's we're not the point is if we lose Gloucester Rugby or Cheltenham Town, God forbid, or Forest Green, it's not, it's not, it's his communities that are affected. Mm -hmm. These are people who work there, uh, and, and some people work there for nothing. These are the hub of communities. You go to Gloucester, I went to a game last season on a Friday night. I mean, it's it's the hub of the town, yeah. these places. Mm -hmm. They mean so much to people. You're ripping, you, you know, you are you might as well be ripping oh, out tens wow. of thousands of jobs if you're gonna let these 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 clubs mm -hmm. go to the wall. 
Mm. It's terrifying. The, it's as important as anything that the government now gets a grip on this. Yeah. Otherwise, we will have nothing to go back to. No. We'll have no fabric. And we are so, I said it earlier about our sporting, uh, uh, the fans in this country, we will have nothing to go back to. No. We will have no fabric to go back to. We have to do something about this urgently. Yeah. Otherwise, we're going to go into the winter where the weather's not as good and we'll have nothing left in the spring. We'll, yeah. just have, we'll just have Liverpool be Man United. Well, that's okay. Um, of course it's okay. But it's only okay because we have championship and League One and League Two and Premiership yeah, yeah, Rugby. Yeah. We have racing and we have Rugby League and we have hockey and we have everything mm. else. That's why it's okay because it's part of the fabric. It's not the only thing. No. It's just it's one piece of the jigsaw. Yes, yeah. So, so um, the answer to your question is worry. governmental level. Yeah. Pressure from mm. all the sports bodies on the government Take this seriously. They're taking it seriously with furlough scheme. And of course, you know, the travel industry, of course, the entertainment industry. I mean, it's driving home, isn't it? How we're a service industry in this country. We are the service industry yeah. kings, Panda. That's great. Except when it comes to a pandemic, you realise how close to the edge we all are. Yes. <coughs> Terrifying, actually, isn't it? It really is. Um, oh, Mark, thank you. Um, I think I've probably taken up enough of your time. <laughs> this you know what I'm going to go and do now? I'm going to go and sort out the socks. That's the sort of thing. That's how we roll in the lockdown. The sock drawer. The sock, sock drawer. drawer. Odd socks. Odd socks. I've got about 400 of them. Oh, I shall watch the football and sort out the odd socks. Tumble dryers sort of eat them or something. I think, um, I think if you want to make your fortune, if you want to make your fortune, uh, I'll get, take 15%. Can somebody invent a clip? Which, which, you know, will not melt away or be yeah. knocked off in the, in the washing machine. So I can clip a pair together and they'll come out as a pair. I know. Wouldn't you know, that that's, the, you know that's, that's what needs to be invented. Maybe I'll go away and do that. Well, that's maybe that, that could make millions. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, you know, that, that would be it. But I think, you know, everyone stay well, look after, look after your families. Oh, look no. After, look after your mental health. It's really important. Go for a walk. Yeah. Dig the it's garden. Important, you know. isn't it? Everyone needs to keep. Well, with the clocks going back in a few weeks, get some oh, daylight. You know, this time know. next month the clocks will have gone back. Get some daylight. Yeah. No. Um, right. Really, really, really important. Thank you, Mark. My pleasure. Thank you very My much. My pleasure. Was that all right? Sorry, was I rambling on a bit?